Good evening, race fans, and welcome once again to the Elite Racing Network for tonight's broadcast of the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series and the Smokehouse Dirt Derby from the virtual Eldora Speedway. I'm Zach Evans alongside William White, Dave Huckleberry, producing tonight's broadcast. Tonight, William, we hit the dirt here in Rossburg, Ohio. Uh, definitely something a little different as we continue the path to the playoffs here in the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series. Uh, what? How do you prepare for a race like this? <laughs> I think for some of the guys who maybe aren't dirt track specialists, I think the key is just turning laps and getting that consistency down. You don't want to be spinning every three laps or hitting your rivals and getting your truck destroyed. So I think just making it to the checkered flag in what's likely to be a very hotly contested and chaotic affair is probably number one priority for most of these guys tonight. We will see who is able to accomplish that. Qualifying has just wrapped up here. There you see the point standings here in the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series. Chase Cabry leading the points, but unless he's sneaked in since I last looked, he is not with us tonight. Uh, Jesse Racimus, Gerald Campbell, Joe Francis, Raymond Hanneman, the rest of the top five, those names in the yellow, currently in the playoffs, those in the blue trying to work their way in tonight. Here we look at the starting lineup. On the pole with a time of 17.708 seconds, the number 40 of Tyler Fody. Jesse Racimus starting second, Jake Scarborough third, Joe Francis fourth, Cody McCorkle fifth, Kyle Hanshaw lines up sixth, Gavin Hibbs seventh, Andrew Hardcastle eighth, Leighton Norgard ninth, Dylan Havir tenth, Harrison Whitehead eleventh, and Dustin Dewar will start twelfth. Row 7 will be Matt Tilda in the 29 alongside Jeff Green in the 38. Richie Hearn will round up the top 15 there with Jaden Racimus on his outside. David Carpenter in the 71. One of it, one of those drivers trying to work his way in. He's got one of the leaders in the regular season standings. Joel Campbell on his outside. Caleb Pecuma and Seth Rawls running out the top 20. Andrew Rucker in the 64 and Michael Goodman in the 44 will make up row 11 with Michael Klein in the 06. And Michael Harsak in the 24 rounding out the top 24. Those three Michaels lined up all next to each other. Behind that, Mitch Havir in the 58. Raymond Hanneman in the 85. And starting shotgun on the field, unable to set a time in qualifying. Sam Boutwell in the 47 Ford for Wally Racing. So tonight, 100 laps. The race distance around this half mile of dirt. You normally hear us talk a lot about strategies and, and, and things such as that in these truck series broadcasts. Not much strategy tonight. No tires even in the pits for these guys to put on. No stages. Just simply get out front, be there at the end of 100 laps. Yeah, it definitely eliminates a big element um, of the racing tonight. Obviously, on the asphalt tracks, you want to consider your strategy your tire strategy your fuel mileage with this it is just from the drop of the green you want to go get it put your foot down and try and get to the front that's gonna make for some good green flag racing hopefully um but it's gonna be a chaotic because green flags now in the air tyler folk is off to a decent launch they had a jesse racimus their single file up in the top three there with joe francis in tow you see the fireworks going off behind the back stretch as we get underway here tyler Foti leading the way Jesse Racimus in second, Joe Francis third, with one lap already in the books. You know, one thing that caught my eye in practice, William, I don't know how how familiar you are, how many times you've seen these NASCAR truck series vehicles on the dirt, but compared to the last time Elite was here, since then we've had the dirt refresh on iRacing about a, oh, almost a year ago, and the speeds are much faster now than they were before. Yeah, definitely. I mean, last time the State of Sports Truck Series got on the dirt was at Knoxville Raceway. I was in that race, and I can confirm it definitely felt a little bit sluggish at times, especially kind of in the middle of those corners. You felt like you were almost crawling, but now you've seen these guys in Eldora ripping right up near the fence there, carrying some great momentum. We're seeing a lot of door banging for a breast there. 
I like Norgard getting the short end of the stick in. That particular exchange is down a few spots now, it's down to 14th there, but we're seeing a lot of battling in the mid pack there, three wide once again. Yeah, Dustin Dewar got hung up in the fence there. Now Jeff Green and Alayton Norgard trying to work by on the inside of him. That is, there may not be tire strategy, so to speak, but you will watch as the night progresses, this track will change. It will evolve as the dirt is used up over the course of the evening. But uh, Dustin Dewar is going to have a hard time finding more racetrack than he's already finding right now. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be very interesting to see how the track evolves on the beautiful things about dirt oval racing that you don't really get with your regular tarmac ovals. You'll see as the race starts to go on, you'll see certain parts of the track get darker. A darker hue usually means it's slicker, so these guys are going to have to find different lines to find the grip. You might see them rip the fence, you might see them go down low. And if they start ripping the fence, you might see slide jobs come into play. So there's a lot of strategy, maybe not in the pits, but definitely racecraft wise and trying to get up those positions go on board here with tyler Fody, and you can see that darker area up top isn't that dark you were talking about just yet that's where they really just haven't been yet for the most part it's still pretty fresh it'll take on an even darker almost a, a black hue when it starts getting worn out and you'll even it'll even be a little shinier when it gets to that point we're still a little ways from that Right now, Tyler Fody, clean sailing out in front. And obviously, one thing he will keep in mind, especially with no tires available in the pits, one thing with this dirt refresh, tire wear is a factor over the course of a 100-lap race, so I'm sure he's doing his best to manage that right rear right now, take it nice and steady, not too much wheel spin, not too much sliding around so that he has something at the end of this race. Yeah, definitely, we've gone green for all 11 laps now knock on wood it goes on for a little bit longer tyler Foti out in front looks super consistent there leaning on the right rear nicely to get the rotation but not so much that it's oversteering through the corner we saw on the cockpit shot there he was very con uh, very smooth with his wheel albeit a bazillion degrees to the right such is the nature of that over racing as we got some beating and banging that's max helder and gavin hibbs there helder getting put in the wall slightly there by the 92, he tries to respond with a slide job back past Gavin Hibbs. He does so successfully. So Matt Telder winning that particular scrap there. That's the fight for P8 on the racetrack. Already, I mean, y you can see the difference between the way some of these guys are wandering all over the track compared to how smooth Tyler Fody was up front. Now we look at Kyle Hanshaw running in that fourth position in the 46 truck. He's got Jake Scarborough behind him in the 52. I am hearing we have a caution on the speedway. We'll see if we can figure out what that is. There is Andrew Rucker and uh, Harrison, Harrison Whitehead. Whitehead. Yeah. To the Mark Rebelus replay machine. Uh, it looks like Richie Hearn's got to get sideways in front of Andrew Rucker, he, and Rucker's got to get collected. And then there's Harrison Whitehead joining the fun as well. Yeah, look, the Andrew Rucker didn't really have time to react to Richie Hearns getting a little bit loose, chased his truck down the bank, and we're going to look from the view of Harrison Whitehead. Looks as though, trying to avoid this incident, he kind of just spun on his own. We'll have to see if he made contact. He had missed Andrew Rucker. I don't think he's going to miss Richie Hearns. No! Clobbers him in the right front. That, I mean, hopefully not, but it might be wheel damage for one or both of those drivers. But that will be the first caution of the evening. Hey, Dave, uh, want to get a quick little ad read here while we're working some caution laps? Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race. Pace tricks off. Here we are back 
under green at Eldora after our first caution of the evening. Tyler Fody, Joe Francis up front. I guess we could have finished that commercial, Dave. No. Okay. Oh dear. Let's. Surveys. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be here. Okay. That, that, what, the, I think that's our best bet here. The yellow's already out. I'm hearing something about I... Harrison Whitehead. Oh, that's not um... supposed to be there. <laughs> I have questions. Oh, so he was... Huh. We'll see. So I think oh, he, he didn't realized... Wanna, he didn't want to merge onto... He was coming the out with the leaders. Everyone yeah. was restarting. And he just slammed on the brakes and spun it. And is now getting... Very close with Tyler Foti's pit crew. That's uh, that's a new one, but uh, I definitely understand Harrison's thought process. I'm a little surprised it threw the caution. Yeah, he wasn't on the track. Oh, look at... Yeah. Well, it might have been. Only just like his backhand was sticking yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I guess. And he tried to drive it back into the pits to not trigger that. But uh, no, he did. He did delay. pretty much everything he could do in that situation to prevent what happened. Uh, yeah, I would agree. But I think we are about to go back racing here. It's a bizarre incident, but definitely, indeed, we are back underway. Tyler Fody, Joe Francis, let's try this again. Francis trying to make that bottom work. Jesse Ooh, receiving Jesse. a hit wall. That's got to stack up everybody behind them. They're three wide. You've got Kyle Hanshaw in the middle, Matt Telder on the bottom. Somehow they stay off of each other, but now Matt Telder's got to throw it in there. Slide job. Jesse Racima's got to cut underneath. This is that dirt track race that we were talking about. Yeah, we're starting to see the slide jobs come out. Matt Telder bought a big one there for third place. Racima was unable to respond there. Three of breast there. Jake Scarborough there on the bottom of the picture, but Matt Telder looks to be up to third there. Scarborough and Racimus unable to retaliate from an awesome slide job there from Matt Telder there in the 29 for 40 race where so Matt Telder knows what he's doing on the dirt tracks. He's only got Joe Francis and race leader Tyler Foti in front of him. Uh, boy, Racimus almost into the wall there, keeps it out of the fence as he's battling with Jake Scarborough in fourth and fifth. 25 laps on the board. Already clicking off the laps here. At, well, I say that, and the caution is out for the third time. There's Michael Hasek and... Caleb Pecumer. Caleb Pecumer. Survey says... Oh, well, they're about 17 wide in front of Michael. I don't know if that's going to have anything to do with this or not. Uh, somebody sideways. Oh, up ahead. That's Jeff Green. Yeah. Jeff Green, Caleb McHumor get to together. So, yeah, Caleb cuts down here, but then Jeff gets out of shape, so they make contact on the entrance of three. And then that's kind of actually kind of oddly straighten Jeff out and spin Caleb down in front of Michael Hasek into 24. Like Michael Klein, a little bit involved there. This looked like they kind of, Jeff Green slid up, slid up off the corner. Caleb Pekuma kind of had a bit of a loose condition that had him chase the truck down. You'll see Pekuma almost gets to the outside. Green gets a little wad of oversteer there, slides up. Pekuma slides down. Jeff Green still trying to catch, comes back down into Pekuma there, and that triggers that whole incident there. So that's three cautions in very quick succession there. So hopefully we can get a bit more green flag running. So I think we'll be going green soon. It tagged Tyler Foti with a crash, but it 
was unless he just stopped to wait for the car, for the ice truck. Yeah. All right. There we go. Green flag back out. Tyler Fody out in front. Three wide for second behind him. Scarborough, Francis Telder. Kyle Hanshaw bouncing off the wall behind them. Telder slides up the hill. Now Joe Francis got cut underneath Telder. As they go into turn number one, it's got to be Joe Francis's turn. Does he go for the slider? No, he keeps it pinned down. Matt Telder's going to have the run. Caution is out. Oh, that big one. Leighton Norgard, Michael Goodman, and... Itchavir. We'll see. I think it's also a little bit further up there. You can't miss a Lady Norgas fluorescent purple truck up there. Looks like he just gets tanked there. Carpenter's oh. in it as well. A couple more guys. Whoa. Michael Jaden Racimus. Jaden's in it. Raymond Hanneman. So all start going into turn one. That's Jaden Racimus. Tags the back of a Lady Norgard. Sends him around. Carpenter. A 47 there gets involved. Making a parking Goodman's lot. In it. Hossack piles in. Bit of a car park there in the middle of turn one and two there. So, after rattling off 11 quick laps to start it, we've been struggling to keep it green here since then. I'll run the gateway ad here real quick. Be right back. Oh. The NASCAR Cup Series returns to Worldwide Technology Raceway on June 1st and 2nd, 2024. The time to get your tickets is now. For only $10 down, you can lock in your seats for an incredible weekend of family fun featuring the Enjoy Illinois 300 and the Confluence Music Festival. Racing, music, camping, it all adds up to one amazing party. Go to www.raceway.com for the hottest ticket of the year. Thanks, as always, to our sponsors here in the Elite Racing Leagues as we get ready for another restart here. Tyler Fody, Matt Telder the front row this time. Fody taking that outside line, and he's got to jump out front as the land rush fills in behind him. Here you see Telder slots into second. Kyle Hanshaw's going all the way to the bottom to challenge for that third spot. He's made it stick. He's still side by side with Joe Francis. Though, but again, works the very bottom of the racetrack there. Kyle Hanshaw up to third place. We have Jake Scarborough and Joe Francis with a monster run off the corner. As the scoring tower thinks that David Carpenter is Sonic the Hedgehog there. He was in first there temporarily, but Back down to P25 there for the 71 again. Hanshaw, the big slider, goes in front of Joe Francis. Couple of guys in the wall there and around the top 10. Joe Francis gets a little bit loose there on the bottom of the track. That allows Hanshaw and Scarborough to get past, as well as Dylan Javier. He's oh, sure. fighting Javier and Racimus there on the high side. We've got another yellow further towards the back. I believe I saw either Rucker or Hossack turned around way back in the shot here. It was a yellow number, but I couldn't make out who. The replay seems to have tagged Rucker, who got tagged by Sam Boutwell. He's got a yellow number, and he's caused the other flag there. Andrew Rucker getting tagged in the back end by Sam Boutwell. Not a lot that Andrew could do there. Single car spin there. Does a little 360, so no damage on either truck, but that will be a caution. I can do a little reading now. Let's do that. This is the Stay Tuned Sports Ruck Series. Stay Tuned Sports was started in 2016 by two friends, even though hating each other's teams with the purpose of producing a sports show like no other. They wanted to create a show that would cover all major sports with a little bit of comedy mixed in. Stay Tuned Sports releases weekly episodes covering NFL, NHL, Major League Baseball, and even some college football. So if you're looking for some hot takes mixed in with some good ball busting, then this is the show for you. Stay tuned, sports, your home for sports nonsense. Our premier sponsors, Blue Egg Marketing, Blue Egg Marketing, rev up your business with Blue Egg, your marketing pit crew, turbocharge your lead generation with experienced drivers that can navigate the com 
competitive track to connecting with your customers. With Blue Egg, you're always in the pole position, leading your brand toward victory lane. Don't spin your wheels. Accelerate success with Blue Egg, fueling small businesses to big win. And Worldwide Technology Raceway. Worldwide Technology Raceway is a motorsport racing facility in Madison, Illinois, just east of St. Louis, Missouri. Features a 1.25-mile NASCAR Cup Series, NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, and Open Wheel Series. And we are back racing. Back underway here at Eldora. Tyler Foti again leading the way. Oh, look at Matt Telder throw it in there. That's not going to work. Somehow he keeps it off of Tyler Foti. And that's got to cost him some momentum in this battle with Jake Scarborough. Scarborough's now got to try to make the bottom work. He might be able to get in front of Telder. He made it work. And now Telder's got to be on the attack on the bottom. Yeah, Matt Telder looking to make those slide jobs work there. He's made the last few work. Couldn't quite get the race lead with it on Tyler Foti. He did a great job at giving Tyler Foti the respect in the room there on the high side. Foti held it well there up on the outside but now Tilda trying to hold the wall there as Jake Scarborough fights on the inside trying to slide past the 29 but to no avail for the time being Matt Tilda doing an awesome job there's gained a few spots since the start of this race and on the restarts he seems lightning quick there the only one to be able to really match Tyler Foti on these green flag drops and now we'll see if he can hang on to Tyler's back end as we seem to be taking off a few green laps all around the top six though they're starting to rip the fence you see Cody McCorkle there Gosh, yeah. on the bottom. Just as I mentioned, the green flag laps, we're back on the yellow. And there is Jeff Green. It appears he has been involved in this one. Uh, man, just barely contact there with the 10 of Seth oh. Rawls. And then another more. tag there from the 59. Unfortunate there for those three. Else, like Jeff Green just lost it on his own. I don't know if he got help from Seth there, but I think he was going to go around regardless. And then Caleb Pakuma, not really with anywhere to go, gives Jeff Green a hefty whack in the left rear. Hopefully, that's not uh, too heavy damage there on the 59 truck because he's doing pretty well there, keeping it fairly clean, albeit caught up in a couple of incidents. But such is the nature of the over racing, he's still in it, which is. Uh, what's the most important, so hopefully he can continue on despite a bit of damage to the front of the 59. We talked about the way the track changes here. Uh, right where, uh, here you can kind of see where that shine is starting to build up in that darker area right below the fence. The, the fence itself still has a little bit of a cushion that's building up, but right where kind of most of these trucks are running under caution, it's definitely where they're starting to lose grip, and that's where you're going to have uh, see more of these slide jobs and see more of these guys trying to run the bottom to make something work. Yeah, it's very interesting, and you have, really have to be on your toes as a driver down on these dirt tracks because things can change on a dime, and you really have to watch how the track evolves. You have to keep tabs on the hues of the dirt to see where the grip is. As, Pace trunk pulls off again. We're going to go green to end the sixth caution process. Again, it's a good start for Tyler Foti. Matt Pelder files into second. Is he going to pull a slider? He's going to try it. Almost clear of the 40, but Tyler Foti again hangs on around the high side. Matt Pelder swing and almost a big hit there for the 29, but he's going to keep trying. He's done really well to get up to this point. Jake Scarborough though. He's trying to get that second place away from Matt Pelder, who's holding it high up near the fence that added momentum for the 29 should get close to clearing the 52 down the straight but again Jake Scarborough gonna keep battling back Scarborough right in the bottom line he's got try no can't get in front of Matt Telder there but they are hanging with Tyler Foti even while this battle carries on Jake Scarborough is finding a little bit of speed there going as about as far to the inside as we've seen anyone go all night Obviously, that's that's dirt that hasn't been used a lot. There's still a lot of grip in it. But there's a reason people haven't been going down there. It's slower when the track is fresh, but maybe with that extra grip, he can make something work here. Yeah, definitely. We see the gap through the mid corner. Obviously, it's going to drop with Scarborough doing the shorter distance around the racetrack. But we kind of get closer and closer through the mid corner there. 
for a couple of laps there as close as eight one hundredths of a second you see again there just over a tenth between Foti and Scarborough through the mid corner there as Foti continues to run the wall Matt Telder though does get clear of the 52 and Telder now looks for a big slider on Tyler Foti makes it stick and he's gonna take oh. the lead but he's gonna try and retaliate on the inside with a slider of his own Almost gets there, gives Telda the room. So nearly contact Telda's oh, in the wall. No. They reckon Matt Telda hard oh. into the wall. Caution. We know exactly where that one is. Man, that was a pretty tough hit for Matt Telder. We'll get a look at the replay. Racing hard there. Foti just gets him in the left rear in the wall and then as Telda comes back down after hitting the wall just off across the nose of Tyler Foti in a wicked impact there into the inside retaining wall you oh, see you smoke see coming out of the 29 that's big engine damage from Matt Telda race gone from amazing to horrible in just a matter of seconds because he pulled off an absolute worldy of a slider looked for all the world to be in the process of taking the lead off of Tyler Foti and as quick as a flash it's all gone horribly horribly wrong now, I am seeing Race Control has issued an EOL to Michael Klein. I don't know if there was a separate incident. Or... That was for, it was for blinking. Blinking. Okay, 10-4. You're going to have a hard time finding a replay of that. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, that's just an awful break, really, for Matt Telder. He had really flexed his muscle to get up there and, and unfortunately pays the price on that contact with Tyler Fody. His shot at the win, pretty much done here. Yeah, definitely. He's going to be losing laps on laps, even if he manages to get back out on the track at all. He hit the wall really hard. We saw the smoke coming out of the back of the car immediately. We knew it was you know, this thick black smoke. It was big engine damage there. A good few minutes of required repair. So he's going to be sitting in that truck, probably just wallowing in despair for a little while because that was a potential first win in the elite racing league kind of gone in a flash but in that jake scarborough has inherited the lead Rising. after that incident between telda and Foti, so he's going to lead his first laps off the evening takes the inside for the restart there gets a good jump gets ahead of tyler Foti. Foti now with pressure from carl handshaw behind him but jake scarborough clear for the lead for the first time this evening let's see if he can hang on to it there you see the call tally issue to the 40 for that contact, but now the 40 has to focus. Uh-oh. Man, that was really close between Fody and Hanshaw there. Hanshaw able to work his way into the second position. Now Tyler Fody under pressure from Joe Francis in the 35. Yeah, Tyler Fody going backwards a little bit off this particular restart gets passed by Carl Hanshaw now facing big pressure from Joe Francis who did get ahead of him. On that particular lap, Foti though does a good job of holding the outside. We'll have the run off the corner. I wonder if maybe Tyler Foti might be a little bit rattled after that incident. With Matt Telder just has to try and shake it off, get back in the rhythm. He's obviously led all night up to this point before conceding first place to Jake Scarborough. Just has to get back in the rhythm, get back in that groove, and we might see him back towards the front. But as of now, Tyler Foti. It's going to be in fourth place, just got cleared by Joe Francis. He's going to try and battle back with a slide job there. Through turns three and four, it does make it six on Tyler Foti back up into the podium positions. Joe Francis, though, we're going to have something to say about that. Got a little bit of a switch or a bit of a dance recital between these two drivers fighting half of P3. Oh, look at this mess. Three wide further back. Sam Boutwell, Andrew Hardcastle, and Leighton Norgard, I believe, were the three trucks battling there. And this is just outside the top 10. Cody McCorkle is in 10th in that two truck just outside the frame. So this is a, uh, these are some valuable positions up for grabs, especially for some of these guys trying to work their way into the playoffs. Uh, definitely some fierce battling here as we get down final 40 laps at Eldora. Yeah, absolutely. Just, I think two races to go before we start the playoffs in may so absolutely it's crunch time for these drivers that are on the bubble or in you see the yellow numbers there on the scoring pillar those are the guys that are in the playoffs but not locked in the guys in red obviously fighting to get into that top 14 and when you see those yellows and those reds 
mixed in together that's where you'll see some of the most fiery battles because they know the playoff implications they know that they are the guys that they have to beat to have a spot in the playoffs for the state of sports truck series in 2024a meanwhile back up at the front tyler Foti not done with Carl Hanshaw after conceding second place on that restart. He wants back past the 46 there, but Carl Hanshaw doing a good job there on the outside. Foti switches to the inside, a bit of a crossover there from the seven-time champion looking to take back second place. Tyler Foti, after being one of the guys that's been up against the fence all night, now trying to make that low side work, ripping the bottom, going catfishing, as they sometimes say in the dirt track world. He's got to get in front of Kyle Hanshaw, but here comes the crossover. Yeah, a bit of a door bang there between the 46 and the 40. Hanshaw had a massive run there off of turn four. Had to respond with a crossover of his own to Tyler Foti there, who again works the outside there. Kyle Hanshaw on the inside, not with the run off the corner that he would have wanted. Concede second place to Tyler Foti. Now faces pressure from Joe Francis, who goes to the inside there in the 35, looking to get back past Kyle Hanshaw who himself is running right up by the wall, maximizing his momentum off the corner. Brushes against the wall, but no harm, no foul for the 46. He's running in that slightly slicker dirt. We'll see how well that works out for him as he does clear Joe Francis down the straight, but Joe Francis again responding on the inside. You're seeing Jake Scarborough still on the bottom. Tyler Foti finding speed on the bottom. We'll see how much longer that becomes the way to go, or if somebody else can make that top side work as now we're looking at Dustin Dewar. He's running into ninth position. Cody McCorkle just ahead of him in eighth. That's a battle shaping up and a late Norgard wants to get involved in it as well in that 12 truck. Yeah, this is a fight just on the outside of the top 10, ninth and 10th. Dustin Dewar and a late Norgard. Two drivers that are in the playoffs on points but are not locked in there. Uh, signified by their yellow numbers on the scoring tower. Letting Norgard there just scrape the worms are slightly coming off the turn for you see. A little bit of a scratch on the right hand side there of the number 12 tanks.gg machine there. Sponsoring a Leighton Norgard there. We've got Andrew Rucker fighting with Jeff Green, Jaden Racemus, Raymond Hanneman. That's further towards the back. Caleb Pacuma in the picture as well there. This is a fight for, from 15th to 19th there so hotly contested points here. Battles all over the racetrack further up front. Here's Kyle Hanshaw, Tyler Foti. The battle for second rages on. That's great news for Jake Scarborough. He's opened that gap up to more than a second. But right now, Hanshaw getting a piece of the wall out of turn two as he battles with Tyler Foti. Gets another piece of the wall there. Going through the middle of turn three and four there. Hurts his momentum. Foti will clear, but Hanshaw again tries to throw a big slider, big slider there from the 46, almost gets clear, but Tyler Foti has the momentum on the high side in that groove to get back past the 46 momentarily. Carl Hanshaw almost hitting the inside wall there, that's how much he's cutting that corner there, trying to make it work there as they start to get past some lap traffic, so Mitch Avere there near the wall on the high side, Michael Hossack who's just been lapped by Jake Scarborough. Those guys in the top 25 there. So Jake Scarborough, nine tenths of a second in front of Tyler Foti. Now opens that gap again to just over a second. So a comfortable gap, but nothing is said and done yet for Jake Scarborough. Inside of 25 laps to go next time by getting the closing time here at Eldora. We've got a little green flag run going. Can Tyler Foti close in on Jake Scarborough? He gets around Michael Hossack here. Kyle Hanshaw still staying within shouting distance of Tyler Foti as well, but now he has to... Oh, there's oh. contact! Oh, and that's contact between leaders and backmark is never good there. Hanshaw and Hossack coming together. And that's allowed Gavin Hibbs to go... He is ripping the fence right now. He's got to get around Kyle Hanshaw for that third spot. He's got to challenge Tyler Foti for the second spot now. Gavin Hibbs, out of nowhere, is absolutely flying... He is closed right up to the back of Tyler Foti. He's blown past Hanshaw and Francis and anyone else along the way. He's up to third and showing some electric pace immediately. Everyone around him ripping the fence. Jake Scarborough still about a couple truck whips off of the wall there. We'll see how that plays out for him. But Gavin Hibbs has found something in these guys now trying to act. Oh, we've got trouble. I believe I saw Jaden Racimus around. 
Then oh, Sam Boutwell is involved. Just Caleb got by the pace truck. Caleb Pecumer calling out. He he accepting at least some measure of blame for this incident. Uh, oh. I don't know if I would have if I were him. I'm gonna be honest. That looks like a bit of an unfortunate racing deal. There involves four or five machines. There, Caleb Pecumer is right down the bottom of the racetrack. He just got. A little bit of a snap there. He's got Rucker, Hanneman, and Jaden Racimus. Jaden just coming down there into the corner. And Caleb Akuma is completely unsighted. He gets into the one there. The 64 is involved. Boutwell, nowhere for him to really go there. I think David Carpenter, that one's piling in as well there. So a five car incident to bring out the yellow. That's a tough one for both those guys. Because gu I guarantee if Caleb was aware how close he was to Jaden, he wouldn't have packed it to the inside of him. Neither of them were probably getting a call from the virtual spotter at that point. Jaden thinks he's clear low. Caleb doesn't expect Jaden to cut down. If either of those guys knew that was their intentions for that corner, they would have both accounted for each other, I guarantee. The end result was they ended up going for the same piece of real estate and around they go. Yeah, definitely unfortunate there. It's kind of one of those weird situations that you kind of get on dirt where you get clear and then all of a sudden you're right alongside someone again. You know, you see the slide jobs and, you know, you're powering around the outside with the momentum. So it is very difficult to account for and the spots definitely do um, a critical role in keeping these drivers from hitting each other as best they can. But now restarting again, Jake Scarborough leads on a restart for the second time tonight. For the second time, he takes the inside Tyler Foti usually preferring the outside when he has led restarts. But Gavin Hibbs now side by side with the 40 of Tyler Foti there. Jake Scarborough still leading Hanshaw, trying to go three wide there. Watching the battle unfold here up front. Gavin Hibbs just barely squeezes in front of Tyler Foti. Foti down to the middle lane. But we saw how strong was Hibbs was against the fence. He's got a challenge for the lead. He might have it here. Yeah, Hibbs has found another gear there, right up by the wall. He is millimeters off the wall there. Scarborough takes the lead through the mid corner, doing a shorter distance around the racetrack. But watch, through off the corner there. Scarborough gets a little bit loose there, doesn't have the grip in the mid corner. And Hibbs flies past the 92. The 52, beg your pardon, the 92 now in the race lead there. With just 16 laps to go, and they get to the strike. Gavin Hibbs leading his first laps of the night. They might be the most important ones. Can anyone chase him back down? Gavin Hibbs is hooked up on that high side with 16 laps to go. Jesse Racimus getting a piece of... Oh, he's getting more than a piece of the fence. All over the wall through turns three and four, trying to gather that truck back up. Now he's under pressure from Tyler Foti for that third position. Yeah, I see Tyler Foti kind of struggling a little bit there, trying to find grip wherever he can. That doesn't get the runs off the corner. This doesn't really get anything in the mid corner either there. Falling back from Jesse Receivers down to the clutches, a little bit of Carl Hanshaw there. Tyler Foti down to fourth, all the while. Gavin Hibbs ripping the wall, mere millimeters off it, is 1.6 seconds clear. He is absolutely flying. Just unbelievable pace Gavin Hibbs has found here in the closing laps. Continues to stretch out that lead on the competition with 13 laps to go. There you see the numbers, but oh, there goes that lead. He had built up. It is gone. Yeah, very unfortunate for Gavin. Looked to be home free there. Got as far as 2.1 seconds ahead there of the rest of the field. There, we'll see what caused this caution in this shot. Jeff Green, Raymond Hanneman, Andrew Hardcastle fighting. See you later, Norco. Getting a little bit loose. Comes down the track. Uh, this looks to be a self-spin from the 85 of Raymond Hanneman. Almost collects Richie Hearn, does a good job of avoiding it there. So a single car spin there to bring out the yellow. Indeed, the tally goes to the 85 of Raymond Hanneman. So that's going to set up a restart with somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 laps to go. I have to assume Gavin Hibbs is going to choose the outside for this restart. And I just... For, man, I don't know if anybody's going to have anything for him on this restart. Well, obviously, that's why we run the races, but he has really, really gotten hooked up here at the end of this race. 
Yeah, definitely. It's been alien pace there from the 90s. So, I mean, to get as much as two seconds clear in the short amount of time that he did was wild. And we saw visually compared to the rest of the field, you know, even the guys that wanted to be running the wall, they weren't nearly as close. They weren't nearly as confident. Gavin Hibbs was inches, millimeters off of the wall, but never hitting it. Maybe a light scrape with his right rear just to you know, almost find his bearings as it were, but never slamming it, never grabbing a big piece of it, but super smooth while going lightning quick. So very impressive in these late stages from Gavin Hibbs. Lights are out on the pace track. We will be restarting with nine laps to go. Gavin Hibbs on the bottom, Jesse Racimus to the outside for this restart. We will see how this works out. Oh, Gavin Hibbs is going to be clear by the time he gets to the start-finish line. He can run whatever lane he wants now. Back to the top, but here comes Jesse Racimus trying to find his way into it. Yeah, I see a little bit of kindness favor back. I think Gerald Campbell there got put in the wall there. You see already Gavin Hibbs right by the wall. Foti and Racimus following him. Hanshaw and Scarborough on the bottom. They lose out to those three up ahead. Racimus again trying to get to the back of Gavin Hibbs, but Hibbs, oh. Racimus big loose off the corner, almost chops down in front of Carl Hanshaw. They reckon at the back almost, I think, there in the mid-pack. Uh, I think they fully and did. And then yellow is out. Saw someone getting turned towards the fence there, just in the background there, and looks to be at oh. least four trucks involved. Yeah, started around Gerald Campbell there, see Seth Rawls. Almost perpendicular to the track there. Him and Rawls make contact. McCorkle's in it. Norgard's in it. Green, Pacuma, everybody gets wadded up in this one. Definitely that desperation time of the evening. Let's see. There you see the contact. It just kind of stacks everything up and then just funnels up to the wall. And then not much time for any of these drivers to react. I see David Carpenter is involved. And right there, he takes a pretty hard shot to the inside wall. That would explain the meatball beside his name on my screen. Yeah, definitely. I wonder if such a little time left, whether that is day done for David Carpenter there in the 71. Some hefty damage to that Chevrolet. But... We'll now be restarting with about four, three laps to go. Maybe this might be a natural GWC. We'll have to see how this caution process plays out. But it's definitely late on in this race. They're doubling up, so we'll be forced to go on the restart. Man, uh, really hanging back from the pace vehicle here. Kind of curious... Uh... Kind of curious what the strategy is here, because that's going to cause the restart to happen earlier. I don't think there's a restart zone here like there is. There we go. I mean, maybe that's a tactic, because Hibbs has got a beautiful start there. He's already nearly four tenths clear of the rest of the field, and Fosi looks to be in a bit of trouble there. Already down to sixth, I think, got super loose in the middle of turns one and two, down to eighth now is Tyler Fossey all the while. Gavin Hibbs gets off to a good start. A shift esports teammate in the 52. That's Jake Scarborough follows in tow. Jesse Racimus there in third. Dylan Haver up to a race high fourth of Seth Rawls, who was just involved in that last incident up to fifth. Watch these third, fourth, and fifth nose to tail, but it's going to be two laps to go for the leaders this time. If they can make it around one more time, then it'll be a race to the checkered flag here at Eldora. There you see Gavin Hibbs in the turns three and four, hoping to see a white flag and not a... Oh, no. We saw the flag we didn't want to see, and definitely not the flag that Gavin Hibbs wanted to see, as Jaden Racine was facing the wrong way out, too. We'll take a look at the Mark Reblos replay machine and see how Jaden Racimus got turned around. Uh, All starts get... are bad of them. Dewar yeah. and McCorkle hit each other. Whoa, he came flying back across the track, splits. Hardcastle and Hearn there, and 
poor Jaden nowhere to go. And McCorkle gets the old meatball flag as a result of that incident. He has issued the tally. I that didn't seem like much of Cody McCorkle's doing. Yeah. Hey. He was doing his own thing. Dustin Dewa got loose in front of him. That's a that's I'm not sure I agree with that call. I don't see anything Cody did wrong there. Yeah, I have a hard time uh I have a hard time with that as well. Let's see. So now we are doubling up again. This will be a green white checkered restart. Gavin Hibbs. Three. Gavin Hibbs, Jake Scarborough, the front row for this one. Pace truck is off. It's time for overtime at Eldora. Gavin Hibbs gets out front. Jake Scarborough jumps up to the outside, but now he's stuck three wide, maybe almost four wide. Look at, you know, these guys all battling sideways. Lots of contact. Are they going to make it to the white flag no. this time? Oh, yes. yes. They reckon behind them, but I think they just about made it. Hibbs still in the lead coming out of turn two. He's got Scarborough and Halley up into third for the first time tonight. Dustin Dewar's crashed. Andrew Rickers crashed. Gavin Hibbs out of turn four. They're wrecking behind him, but Gavin Hibbs is going to take the win here at Eldora. Jake Scarborough second. Dylan Havir up to third. I think that's a first ever one to an elite for Shift Esports. Gavin Hibbs and Jake Scarborough on the top of the podium. There you see the celebra celebratory donuts applied to the driver's side door of Gavin Hibbs. And now he's gonna celebrate on the front stretch as the pyro goes off behind him. That always makes for cool photos when you get to win at one of these tracks with the pyrotechnics and the fire and the fireworks going off. And we'll take a look at the results here. Gavin Hibbs, your winner. Jake Scarborough, second. Dylan Havir, third. Kyle Hanshaw coming home fourth. Tyler Fody rounding out the top five. Sam Boutwell in all of that on the last lap, getting up to six. That's going to be huge for his playoff hopes. Jeff Green, seventh. Gerald Campbell, eighth. Joe Francis, ninth. Raymond Hanneman rounding out the top ten. Caleb Pecumer finishes 11th. The late Norgard, 12th. Richie Hearn up to 13th at the end of it. Michael Klein, 14th. Jesse Racimus, 15th. Seth Rawls, 16th. David Carpenter, 17th. Jaden Racimus finishes in the 18th posi position. Michael Goodman, 19th. Dustin Dewar, 20th. Andrew Hardcastle, 21st. Andrew Rucker, 22nd. Mitch Havir, 23rd. Cody McCorkle, 24th. Michael Osak, 25th. Matt Telder, 26th. And Harrison Whitehead, finishes 27th and now we wait for our top three finishers to uh join us here there we go all right who we got to talk to first dave third place dylan Devere. all right dylan welcome to the booth third place finisher here at eldora we didn't talk about you a lot tonight, but there you were at the end when it mattered. Uh, talk us through what it took to get up front at the end of this race at Eldora. Uh, it was mainly just trying to be consistent, not try to get any wrecks. Uh, I definitely just tried to keep it safe. Um, yeah, just gas through it. <laughs> that's, sometimes that's what it takes. Uh, 
definitely, uh, Dylan, one of the you're, you've been one of the new guys here in Elite this season. We, we've seen the development and the progress over the course of the season, and now this third place finish. How much does this mean to to be able to finish on the podium at, at the end of one of these races? Yeah, I'm actually really glad that I was able to place that far. <laughs> I was not expecting to get third tonight. Um, well, yeah. go ahead. Um, yeah, I just tried to just keep with it, and yeah. <laughs> I uh, must say, really. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> well, before we let you go, Dylan, who do you have to thank? Uh, definitely my team, uh, Caleb, Frank, uh, Mitch Haver, uh, and especially Tyler Fody, uh, and also JD Designs for painting all of our cars. There you have it, Dylan. Congratulations. And just for me, be sure to give Tyler a little bit of crap for finishing ahead of it. I. Uh, all right, so that's Dylan Haver finishing third tonight here at Eldora. Let's see who we can get a hold of next, Dave. Second place, Jake Scarborough. Jake Scarborough coming home second. Of Okay, I'm going to ask a stupid question. Can you hear me? Because I just tried yeah, I to pull my headphones out of my computer. Fantastic. Jake, congratulations on the second place run tonight. Um definitely a wild one you were up there at the end um what what was it going to take to get around that 95 at, or the 92 excuse me at the end of it um honestly i don't think i had enough time left to get around gavin he was making that top side work i couldn't make it stick and be comfortable with it so i i think unless there was maybe like another 10 something laps that was my only shot at gavin but with the way it was and the circumstances you know he he just kind of drove off with it at the end. Obviously a good uh, team night for Shift Esports. 1-2 finish. Uh, how special is that to be able to, to run 1-2 with your teammate here tonight? Um, it was definitely special in practice. I was joking with Gavin. I was like, it would be nice if we uh, kind of held our own up front because Seth was talking about how he was uh, just kind of struggling to find the right line and uh, right groove and everything. So it's nice that uh, something we were kind of joking about turned out to be uh, the case tonight, and especially from uh, from being with the team that took a shot on me at the beginning of the season to kind of bring me aboard and um, to have this opportunity and to kind of have a good finish is nice. Before we let you go, Jake, who do you have to thank on this runner-up finish? Um, everyone at Shift. Um, Obviously, yeah, Gavin uh, and Seth tonight, obviously, since uh, they were there. Joe Francis, too. <laughs> um, geez, all my sponsors are my own brands, basically. So um, even then, just, uh, I guess, the Post and the Olympian, since those are the only two that kind of stuck around, helped me out. Um, nice to finish second with a car that had a special meeting uh, with what was on the hood for colon cancer awareness absolutely uh congratulations jake and uh we'll see you next week all right thank you so there's your second place finisher jake scarborough that just leaves one driver to talk to before we call it an evening and that is your winner gavin hibbs uh, gavin first off let's talk about that pace you found against the fence there in the let's say last third of the race, I mean, just when it looked like everybody was going to stick to the bottom for the rest of the night, you were blowing by guys up against the fence. Did you have an idea that going into the night that was going to be a, a trick up your sleeve or was that just something you found over the course of the race? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I personally thought this whole race, like people were going to run the top cause that was going to be with the preferred line even with the warning track but i saw a bunch of guys running the bottom and i'm was thinking like okay maybe the top is not as effective as it once was uh like say at the early part of this race but um i basically still took took the idea of like running a dirt modified where if you can get your tire your two tires or just one tire up uh where it up on the top part of the track where it's not 
uh, greased off that maybe you can make it work around the top. So I was kind of basing it off that. And uh, once I saw it was catching the guys in front of me, like Fody and Jake and Joe, I was thinking, okay, you know, maybe if at some point they're going to see me run the top, then they'll move up. But that never came to be. Uh, I was cu- quite surprised of, I'm, I, to be honest, I'm very surprised with my pace there at the end. Man, you, you got out front using that high side, and then I, I know it had to be frustrating at the end of the race, those cautions, just, especially that one time. I mean, you, you were almost in sight of the white flag, and then the yellow comes out. What did it take to maintain your composure and bring home this win? Uh, Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, that's goes to my guys at Shift Esports, you know, uh, like guys like Seth, uh, Ty McIntosh, Nick and Delicato, uh, just basically telling me, just trying to tell me to just stay calm. You know, like, yeah, you had the white flag, but, you know, stay calm, you know, keep doing what you're doing and, you know, keep your composure and you'll get to the white flag eventually. Before we let you go, Gavin, who do you have to thank on this trip to Victory Lane tonight here at Eldor? Oh, uh, yeah, obviously my uh, design company, Hips Designs, uh, if you want an iRacing paint scheme made, uh, go hit me up on Twitter at Hips Designs or my or my personal account, uh, Gavin Hips One. Uh, Shift Esports and Seth Rawls, you know, for bringing me on board for a part time season in trucks. Um, him, Ty, Jake Scarborough, uh, and all those other guys at Shift Esports, you know, helping me trying to get better everywhere we go on the elite calendar. Um, numbers, my numbers by Joe, my affiliate sponsor, you know, Joe Francis, his company. Uh, if you want your iRacing number uh, made into wood and hang up on your wall, either in your sim room or anywhere like that, go hit up Joe at Joe 24 ever. And finally, my parent team, Strictly Stock Motorsports, uh, all those guys, including Joe have been good good friends of mine for the last couple of years and we really love their support all right there you have it congratulations gavin and we'll see you next week yep thank you guys all right that does it for our podium interview tonight as you can see on the left hand side of the screen just one race remaining in the regular season next week we uh we figure out who's going to the playoffs at talladega and uh that really I mean, anybody, of course, who watched Talladega in the real world today, that kind of speaks for itself what kind of drama we can expect next week, William. Yeah, definitely, Talladega. It's very fitting for a regular season finale to have a super speedway. It's an absolute wild card, and it really throws everything that, you know, you know about these guys out the window because the super speedway, anyone can win. You know, you see the guys towards the front of the regular season stand, and you think, oh, they're a shoe in but... They get wrecked early on. They might be on the brink of losing their playoff berth altogether. And you could see and perhaps an unlikely candidate um, going into Talladega. They win it. They're in. So it's a great wild card. A race in general, regardless of where it is on the calendar, it's a wild one to watch. And even more so when there's stakes such as playoff berths on the line. So it's going to be a fun one for sure. When William says anyone can win at Talladega, I know it's true. Because they let me win a truck race at Talladega here one time in Elite. So if I can do it, anyone can. So be sure to check that out next week. Between now and then, still plenty of racing to see here on the Elite Racing Network. Tomorrow night, the Elite Rebelist Photography Grand National Series will be at Watkins Glen for a little road course racing. And then on Wednesday, guess what? We have more road course racing. The Belly Up Sports Cup Series will be at Road America in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. And then on Thursday, you're never going to believe it, William, we've got more road course racing. The Warriors for Peace IndyCar Series is on the road course at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So if you're into road course racing, I have great news for you. This is the week for you here in Elite before we go, of course, to Talladega to wrap up the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series regular season on that note on behalf of dave huckleberry william white i am zach evans bid you all a good night thank you for watching congratulations to gavin hibbs on his win here at eldora 
And be sure to join us in one week's time as we find out who's going to battle for the championship here in the Stay Tuned Sports Truck Series. Have a good night. Mm-hmm. <laughs>